I love color. Color in a photograph is such a powerful tool. In this video, we will teach you how to add huge impact to your images by using colored gels on your lights. Here are some images from a shoot we did with Claire that will show you the possibilities of using gels in your photographs. In this video, we're going to teach you how to use gels properly. In a studio shoot, outdoors, in nature, we're going to have a whole range of examples of using color and colored gels in your images. Firstly, we're going to start off with this live shoot of Claire in the studio, because I know you're dying to get into it. Then I'm going to go through some of the technical aspects later on. So hang around to the end and you'll learn more about how we produce the results that we do. G'day. We're here in the studio once again doing a shoot with coloured gels. We've got Claire as our model. We're going to do a whole range of different effects with different coloured gels. You can see some of the lighting that we're using, various different lights. I'm going to start out with basic speed lights because that's probably what most of you people are using. Uh, and the results that you can get can be amazing just with small cheap speed lights. We're going to progress later on to do some more work with some softbox, some gridded softboxes. But most of all, we need to think about constricting the spread of our light because our gels will mostly light our shadow areas. So we need to create some shadow areas for that color to work in. So we're using grids, we're using snoots, we're using honeycomb grids to concentrate our light into specific areas. So have a look and see what we do. And hopefully you'll learn something with using colored gels. So Claire, we're starting off with a silhouette shot. We're going to be lighting the background with red from our red gel on our flash. So we need you to turn around to the side because we want to get a profile shot for the silhouette. Whenever we're shooting silhouettes, we always want to shoot a profile. And I need to hide that flash in behind you. So I need you to move forward a little bit. Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's great. I want you to look straight over towards the wall over there. Yep, lovely, that's good. Yeah, 
Terrific. Okay, that looks great. It's a great expression, but we're going to ramp it up a little bit. Uh, we're going to put a blue light on the back of you and the red light on the, on the background. So again, we, we might turn you the opposite way this time, just for a little bit of variety. Yeah, that's it, okay. Yep, good, but I need that profile straight through that way. Yep, okay, here we go. Yes, beautiful. So we've got that little bit of blue coming through just to highlight rim light clear, yeah? Okay, it looks great on her hair and the, um, the edges of her. We'll do one more, yep, that's it. Drop those hands down a little bit for me, yeah, that's it. Good. Okay, great. Just two speed lights, one with a red gel, one with a blue gel. I'm using this black card as a flag. A flag is something that just stops the light hitting your camera. So we're putting this to try and stop that red light in the background from hitting our camera and causing some lens flare. Okay, so we've got Claire changed into a different outfit. We've changed our light around a little bit. We've got a blue gel on our speed light hitting her from the front side, which means that's the main light. That's the light that's lighting the front of her face. So we'll need to get her to turn her face towards that light. We've also got a red gel on our speed light at the back. So again, we're just using two speed lights, one with backlight coming through to light her hair and the other one to light the front of her with the blue gel. Okay, so Claire, we just want to get you to turn your face that way a little bit for me. Yeah, that's it. Wonderful. Just eyes to me. Turn my camera on. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Yeah, that looks really good. Yeah, that's it. Okay, chin down a little bit. Yeah. Fantastic. Claire's got this hair that just looks really great with that backlight. With that little bit of volume in her hair, it looks terrific. That made you smile, didn't it? <laughs> okay, great. One more. Yeah, that's it. Here we go. Eyes to me. Yeah, good. Okay. Fantastic. Nailed that perfectly first time. Okay, so we'll change the light around again and we'll do a different sort of setup. All we've done now, we've kept the same lighting setup, but I've just put an extra light with a snoot to concentrate the light onto Claire's face. And that light doesn't have a gel on it. So we're going to get natural color on her face and we're going to have those two gels working on either side of her. So have a look at these results. Okay, let's see it. Great, yeah. Just turn your face towards the light a little bit more. Yeah, that's it, good. Okay, yeah, fantastic. One more, yeah. Great. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to just turn this light down a bit because it is a little bit bright. Just to make my processing a little bit easier. So I just keep going, that's it, yeah, good, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, that's it, good, yep, okay, all right, that's great, <laughs> thank you. We've changed our lighting setup again. We've started using some larger soft boxes now. Um, similar results could be gotten with speed lights. It's just that we've got these large soft boxes, so we may as well use them. Again, they're gelled. We've got a blue strip box on the background, uh, from the background. We've got a red soft box on the other side of Claire, and we've got that snooted natural light on her face once again. So I need to be a little bit careful here because I've got that soft box aiming towards the camera, I'm going to get a little bit of flare. 
because any light that's coming straight towards the camera will give us flare. But often it gives a good effect. Um, so I'm going to try it out first before I put a flag in front of it, just to see if the effect is um, something worth trying. Uh, well, what you did before, just with your hands down there and looking straight down, I really, I quite like that, yeah? Okay, that's great. That's good, okay. Up to me, yeah? All right, just going to zoom in a little bit. Yep, you're right. Okay, maybe play with your hair a little bit, yeah? That's it. Yeah, good. Okay, eyes to me, yep. Okay, lovely. Now we're just going to use a little bit of smoke in the background. A little bit of smoke in a can just to spray it around, just to give us a bit of atmosphere. And for those gelled lights in the background, just to have a bit more of an effect. That's great, Claire. Yep. Ah, beautiful. When you're ready, Alison. Down a bit lower, yeah. Yeah, that looks good. Let's see, that's the effect we get. So, a little bit up and down, yep. We don't use too much because we don't want the place to fill up. Yeah, great. Down low, down low a bit more we need. Lower? Yeah, up, up and down, just, yep. All right, when you're ready, that's it. Yeah, that's great. Um, one last one, maybe just around the back of her shoulders. Okay, here we go, yep. That's it. Okay, yeah, terrific. That looks good. We've got a different setup here again. I've still got that snooted light onto Claire's face to give her a natural skin tone on her face, but I've moved a couple of speed lights in behind her and they'll be in the shot. So they'll be giving me a bit of flair in that background. It's going to give me a little bit more of a glamorous sort of a look to the shot, but we could do it with a little bit of smoke and without a little bit of smoke. So we'll do a little bit of both. You'll see the results that we get. Okay, that's great, Claire. Yep, just like that. Wonderful, here we go. Okay, yeah, good. Like that, just tilt frame, yeah. Just turn your face a little bit towards that light, yeah. That's it. Okay, great. Yep, one arm up will be good. Good. Yeah. Maybe turn around to the side a little bit. Yep, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll get a little bit of smoke in there and see how that looks. Okay, when you're ready. Good. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, just one more, Alison. Yep. Here we go. Yep. Okay. Good. Okay. You can see how that smoke just diffuses the flash in the background and just makes it look a little bit more um, cinematic, even though I don't like that word. Um, there's no other word for it. People say cinematic when they can't think of anything else to say. Okay, that's good. All right, we'll get you changed again. Okay. So our next setup, we're using a small beauty dish just to throw natural light onto Claire's face. We've got a couple of backlights there. We're doing full length shots this time. So we did try a couple of shots and her feet were very dark because most of our light's coming from above. So we've got a, a small snoot throwing a bit of blue light down onto Claire's feet. Okay, focus, yeah, that's good. I like that looking up at the, at the light, yeah? Okay, great, yep. Good, yeah. That's it. Okay, maybe feet apart a little bit this time, yep, that's it. Good, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, that's great. So we've got Claire sitting down this time, similar sort of lighting scenario, just to get a different sort of look to the shot. Okay, here we go, Claire, great. I'll just check my first one to see. Yeah, 
That looks good. Lovely. Here we go, yeah. Okay. Maybe throw all your hair over that one side for me. Yeah, good. Okay, here we go. Let's push the shirt back off the shoulder for me. Yep. Good. Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Claire's nailed it again. So great working with a model who knows what to do. Not that any of my other models don't know what to do. I think I'll cut that bit out. <laughs> yes. All right, that's terrific. Now we're going to do the, the blowing hair ones, okay, with the light in behind. So we might get you changed. Flashback to the day that you ran away. You said to see your family. But I ran into you yesterday and you never... We've refined our technique a little bit here. We're going to be lighting Claire's face with our beauty dish with the grid on it just to, to throw some natural light on her face. And we're using an LED light in the background, not a flash. It's a constant LED light. So it's, it's gelled blue, so it's gonna give us that blue effect. But I'm gonna take a couple of shots first with a fan blowing to blow Claire's hair. Then I'm gonna slow my shutter speed right down, which is going to still give us the sharp image of Claire's face because our flash will fire on her face but the hair is going to be blurry and moving around and swirling because of that, low shutter speed, that slow shutter speed with the constant light in the background. Okay, so we'll just do one like that first, Claire. Yep, just push your hair out onto the points of your shoulders if you can, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay, focus, yeah. That's good, chin down a little bit for me, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, bring your hair forward on both sides. That's it, we'll get Alison to just blow it a little bit. Now let us know if this gets uncomfortable, okay. Okay. Yep. It's good. Lovely. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, that's great. Okay, so what we're going to do now is change my settings a little bit. One half a second, so we'll probably go down to one full second. Okay, that should be good. Okay, now, okay, focusing. All right, when you're ready, Alison. That's it. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, what we need to do is turn out the lights. Now we need, we're getting a bit of, bit of ambient light in this shot, so Claire's a little bit blurry because of the slow shutter speed. So we're going to turn out the ambient lights so that that flash is the only thing that's lighting clear. Okay. Okay, so we're in darkness here, we're focusing. Okay, when you're ready, Alison. See it? Yep. Great. Okay. That's good. Now we're going to change our background gel to red. All right, now we've changed to a red backlight, so it's going to look a little bit more like flames as Claire's hair is blowing around. We're going to turn our room lights out again, and we're shooting on one second exposure. Okay, here we go, Alison. Yep. Yep. Okay, good. Now I did something a little bit tricky then, I moved the camera at the same time. So 
we got a little bit of flare on Claire's hair, but I moved the camera around a little bit just to give a little bit more movement into the shot. I'm not sure if it worked or not, but we'll play around with that a little bit more and see what we can do. So you can see it's a little bit experimental. I'm not sure if it's worked yet, but we're going to play around with a couple of in-camera movement shots and see what we can come up with. When you're ready, Alison. Okay, yep. Okay. Good. We could get some fire and put it in behind you. <laughs> yeah, mm. I mean in Photoshop, not in reality. I know you're keeping secrets, hoping that I will see this, but for whatever reason, I think I like it. Feels like there's something missing. We're just finishing off with a bit of a harlequin sort of a shot. We're gonna have rainbow colours all over the place. We've got all of our lights or, or most of our lights working in this shot. We're going to have green ones, red ones, orange ones, blue ones all over the place. So we'll just see what we come up with. We're going to do a little bit of a slow shutter speed too during this session. So I'm on a hundredth of a second now. I'm going to drop it down to about a quarter of a second or half a second just to finish off. Okay, great. Here we go. Just focus. Yeah, great. Good. Just check that that light's in the right spot. Yeah. Terrific, okay. Yeah, lovely. Just moving in close, yeah. Good, try to keep your face towards that beauty dish if you can, yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah, love it. More. Maybe play with your hair a little bit more. Yep, we can mess it up now. It's at the end of the session. Yep, good stuff. Yep. A few smiley shots. Yep. Imagine you're enjoying yourself. That's it, lovely, yeah. Great. Last one, yeah? Good. Okay. Terrific. Now, we're just going to slow down the shutter speed a little bit. Um, you don't need to do anything different. I'm just going to move my camera around a little. So I'm going to go down to a half a second. Now I need to be a little bit careful when I'm doing this that I don't have the, the lights going over Claire's face. I need to be a little bit careful with how I move my camera. Okay, here we go. Good, yep. Great, yeah, here we go. Good, yep. Okay, and the last one. All right, okay, wonderful. That's a wrap, thank you very much, Claire. Well done, everybody. So we're all finished now. We've had a fabulous shoot with Claire. You can see all the results that we've gotten. So we've done shots with different colored gels. We've done slow shutters. We've been dragging the shutter. So it's a really creative technique that you can play around with. And I'm sure you'll get some great shots. You don't need a lot of equipment, just some cellophane or some little flash gels you can pick up for $10 on eBay and use your speed lights. You'll be amazed at the results that you get. Okay, we finished our shoot. Um, Claire did a fabulous job. We used a lot of different lighting effects and things. I just want to ask Claire what she thought about the shoot because it's a little bit radical. It's something that she probably hasn't done before. Did you have fun? Yeah, yeah. I love working with the fun lights. I usually do a lot more like sterile e-com, so it's so much fun. I loved every second. Yeah, it's something we don't do here. We don't do sterile e-com. <laughs> okay, we'll see you in the next class. See ya. We use colours in our photographs all the time. We use the colours of nature. We use blue skies, sunsets. We use various different coloured plants and animals in our shoots to enhance the image. We also use night lights. The night is a fantastic time to be shooting coloured images, gelled images, images with various different coloured light sources. As you can see here, we can get amazing results shooting at night because of all those different coloured light sources. We use coloured backgrounds in our photographs to enhance the look of the image. Any interior shots that we do, we can use coloured light to enhance the image, to make it look a little bit more exciting.
We use substances such as smoke, steam, or water. Anything that we can throw some color onto to enhance the look of our images. We use car lights. We use LED sculptures. There are a number of different ways that we can include these elements into our photograph to enhance the colors and to make our images more punchy. What is a gel? A gel is any sort of translucent colored substance that we can put over the top of our lights or our camera as well. Here are two examples. We've got some cellophane here that we can put over the front of a studio light to color our light blue. We've also got these small speed light gels that we can buy for less than $10 in a range of different colors that we can use to color our image. We can use flash, we can use LED, we can use sunlight in various different ways. Any kind of light source can be gelled and can be colored. We can even use water bottles, colored water bottles, or any sort of fruit drink bottle that you can put over the front of your flash to change the color of that light. We tend to use gels in darker environments because they show up more. If we tried using gels in bright sunlight, the proportion of colored light in our image would just make it almost unnoticeable. So at night, indoors in darker environments, if we've got some deep shadows in our image, we can use those areas to throw this colored light into. Nighttime is a great time to do it because we've got darkness everywhere. We can throw colored light around in various different places from the front, from the back. We can also do that indoors. If we turn all of our lights out, we can use colored gels to throw colored light pretty much anywhere we want to. When we're using gels, we tend to restrict the spread of light because we don't want to contaminate that color in other areas of our image. So we tend to use snoots or some sort of way that we can restrict our light. We can use honeycomb grids. We can use various different ways. We can have our flash close to our subject so that that light spread is not too far. We can use um, the zoom on our flash to restrict that light spread. We can feather our light sources, which means turning them away slightly. So just the edge of that light hits our subject where we want it to. So in all the images that you see in this class, We've used restricted light sources, restricted spread of that light source because we want to place that color in a particular spot. We can use gels on studio lights. We can use them on speed lights. We can use them on flashlights or a torch so that we can just paint the light in various different colors on our subject where we want it to be. We can use them on LEDs. LEDs are a little bit more difficult to restrict with that spread of light, but we could do it. Just Think of ways that you can restrict that light. One phenomenon that is a little bit difficult to get is that the brighter your light is, the more washed out your gel will be. So if you want your gel to be a bit more saturated and a bit more intense in the color, you often need to just turn your light down a little bit because as you turn your light up, it tends towards white, which tends to wash out your color a little bit more. I mostly use off-camera flash when I'm shooting with gels, simply because it allows me to push that light into those areas that I've just been talking about, into those shadow areas. It makes it a bit more easy for me to do that. I also don't use auto white balance, because if I used auto white balance on my camera, it would try to correct that color of those gels in each image. I just tend to set a flash white balance for all of the gel shots that I shoot, so that they're all consistent. And when I go to process them, they're all easier to process. Of course, when we're using gels, we need to be careful that we don't heat them up too much. Some gels, particularly cellophane, can be quite flammable. So if you're using them on a hot light source, be very careful and make sure that safety is a major factor in what we do.